Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Show video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nokia 5230 Neuron, or just the Nokia Neuron. The Nokia Neuron was launched on November 2009, and from what I can tell, it got some pretty good reviews, mostly due to its GPS features including free offline maps of North America and turn-by-turn -turn navigation. During its lifespan, the Nokia 5230 sold about 150 million units, making it one of the best-selling phones to date. In 2010, Nokia released a cost-reduced version of the 5230 known as both the 5233 and 5228 depending on the market. In 2018, the 5233 became a bit infamous in the news though when a teen girl in India died after the battery in her 5233 exploded while she was using it right next to her head. And it's a good thing for Nokia this happened 8 years after the launch of the 5233 because by that time the Nokia brand didn't even really exist anymore. Nokia had been bought by H&D Global, who were quick to point out the fact that they didn't have anything to do with the 5230 line and that they are quote, committed to producing high quality handsets which deliver a strong user experience and meet high customer expectations. So yeah, the Nokia 5230 Neuron, a device with a funky design and assembling with a checkered past, let's go ahead, open up the box and take a look. Inside the box we've got the phone, the charger, which is a Nokia proprietary thing, a mini USB cable for data transfer, no USB charging here, then we've got the battery, some super cheap and uncomfortable looking headphones, and finally we've got a bunch of documentation that doesn't really matter. But before we power it up and play with it, I just want to take a minute to admire this design. It's not that this design is modern, sleek, or really attractive in a normal way, but I still really think the weird design is awesome. I've never really seen anything else like it with that weird grey bumper around the top half of the phone. I guess the real reason I'm attracted to this design is just because this phone is from Nokia. You know, the people who designed all those Lumia phones. But anyway, let's go ahead and insert the battery, and then we'll power up the Nokia Neuron. Once it's powered on, we can see that this phone is running Nokia's S60 5th edition user interface which runs on top of Symbian OS version 9.4. This is actually my first time using a Symbian based OS and I've gotta say I really like the modern design and the fact that this runs Java games that can be sideloaded. No need to use the built in app store, or OV store as it was called on Symbian devices. Which of course, the OV store is dead in 2022. So yeah, I've sideloaded a lot of games on this thing because it can, and yeah, this era of Java mobile games anywhere from 2007 to 2012, I just really like these games. If you want any recommendations for good games that have been tested to work on the Neuron, I highly recommend WordCrafter, Galazar Deluxe, DoodleFit, and SimCity Deluxe. But we'll talk apps and games later. Right now let's talk about some of the physical features of this phone. On top we've got a power button which we'll talk about later the proprietary charging port, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and a mini USB port used exclusively for data transfer. Unfortunately, you can't charge the phone through USB. On the left side, we've got a little speaker that's actually pretty impressive, more on that later. And then we've got these two doors for accessing the micro SD and SIM card slots. Over on the right side, we've got a boring camera shutter button and volume keys. But then, one of my favorite features of this phone, we've got the screen lock switch. This little ridged switch on the side of the phone is how you lock and unlock the screen. And honestly, I think this switch is one of the most well-designed ergonomic ways to unlock a phone I've ever seen on a phone from this time. They could have easily just done the unthinkable like most phone brands and used the power button on top as the almost unreachable screen lock and unlocker. But they opted for this much more pleasant to use alternative that really shows some thought was put into this design. It locks and unlocks quickly too with some added feedback from the internal vibrator motor, which I must say is better than the feedback systems on some modern phones. Unfortunately though, the unlock speed is about the only thing that's quick on this phone. During the testing that I've done so far, I've experienced several lockups, glitches, crashes, and just general slowness trying to do pretty much anything. And it's not just me who thinks this phone is a bit slower than it should be. Many reviews from the time commented about its sluggish performance and overly convoluted user interface. I'm not sure if these slowdowns are a hardware thing or a software thing, I suspect it's probably a little bit of both, but it's noticeable enough that it would definitely be a cause for frustration and confusion in some users. Even some games seem to be unable to run on this phone due to its lackluster performance. 
What makes this experience even worse is that this touchscreen is a resistive touchscreen rather than a more modern capacitive display, meaning that you have to actually press the screen instead of simply touching it. It is one of the best resistive displays I've ever used, but it still adds to the frustration because you do still notice it sometimes. The sluggish interface and the fact that this phone doesn't have Wi-Fi would have really been a deal breaker for me despite the low price of about 70 US dollars in 2009. At that time I would have been all in for the new Motorola Droid, an awesome phone from 2009, but it cost about $100 more than the Neuron, and boasted more features than your average cell phone user at the time even needed. Getting back to the Neuron though, it's no slouch when it comes to features. Despite the low cost, the Neuron boasts some pretty nice media features. Since there is a micro SD card slot, you can expand the storage with a micro SD card of up to 16GB, plenty for storing photos, videos, and music. And speaking of music, you can play media files as you'd expect, which makes this phone a great MP3 player alternative, but in my opinion this is better than most MP3 players because it's got a fully customizable graphic EQ, so you can either choose one of their pre-made presets, or just make your own. And speaking of music, let's talk about that little speaker on the side. It's actually pretty good. Obviously you can tell it's just a single speaker, but it's a really good one if you ask me. If they had put two of these to make it a stereo pair, I could have pretty much said with confidence that these were the best speakers on a phone at the time, but it's just this one, and it impressed me more than I expected it to. But if you're not in the mood to listen to your music out loud, you've also got this 3.5mm headphone jack so you can plug in your favorite pair of headphones and listen to your music that way. And if you don't have any music on your phone, this phone also has a built-in FM radio app which will require you to have headphones plugged in to use as an antenna, but from my short time testing it out, the quality is really good, so if you're into FM radio, this would be awesome for you. Another thing I was kind of impressed by was this 2 megapixel camera. The photo quality isn't amazing as you can probably see, but if you were a phone collector like I am, you'd probably be a little bit impressed too. I'd say this quality would have been absolutely serviceable at the time since most people would have just been looking at these photos on a small screen like this one. There's no autofocus, it's just a fixed focus camera as you would expect, so don't even try to take photos of anything up close. There are some cool software features in this camera app like the various scene modes and some manual control over the camera with adjustable white balance exposure, ISO, contrast, and sharpness. You can also record video clips, but it's not all that interesting as you can see. As far as other features go, we have most of the standard tools like file manager, calculator, converter, notepad, calendar, and a dictionary, which is kind of cool because it's not something you see included on a lot of old phones. Also I feel like it's worth mentioning that video playback on this phone is handled by the legendary Real Player, although it's been skinned over to where you wouldn't even know it was there if you didn't see the icon in the apps list. Another cool feature of the Nokia Neuron 5230 is the Maps app. The included OV Maps has offline turn-by-turn -turn voice guided navigation, which unfortunately isn't functioning due to my phone for some reason not being able to pick up a GPS signal. I can still explore the offline maps though, which is pretty cool. It's really just as well that the GPS won't let me navigate anywhere because I noticed that these maps are pretty out of date, and a lot of businesses are either no longer there or have moved, but still show up on these maps. So that got me curious as to whether or not there were map updates for the OV Maps app, but I couldn't really find any updates still around, if there ever were any updates in the first place that is. Nokia's OV Maps was really ahead of its time though, with some people even confidently predicting OV Maps would beat out Google Maps. <laughs> that didn't age well. Before the OV shut down in 2011, there were many updates to the OV Maps app, adding tons of cool new features that we unfortunately won't be able to try out today since the Neuron doesn't support newer versions of the app, and many of these maps features don't work offline anyway. To sum up my experience with this phone, it's been fun to explore and use Symbian OS for the first time, but there are definitely drawbacks if you were to try to use this phone as your everyday driver. One thing I didn't talk about earlier is the input methods you're forced to use on this device. And I say forced to use because none of them are very great. First there's handwriting recognition, which as you might imagine can really only go one way with a screen this small. The recognition software side of things isn't that bad, it's just trying to write with your finger on a screen this small. It's not all that practical really. Then there's the full screen QWERTY keyboard which would be totally acceptable except that you can't type too fast or it'll just stop accepting letters you press. 
It's really kind of frustrating when you start getting used to a keyboard to the point where you can type at a normal speed only to be slowed down by the unresponsive keyboard. If you're used to an alphanumeric keyboard though, we've got that here too, which works as you would expect, but obviously this mode of input has its drawbacks too. So out of the three input methods, there's really not one that's much better than the other. I can see why people back then were so into hardware keyboards. Software keyboards just weren't there yet, so if you were stuck with a phone that only offered software keyboard, good luck and have fun. Honestly though, that's not where this phone's shortcomings end because the build quality kind of shows that this is a budget device. For example, one day I just set this phone on my desk and came back later, picked it up only to realize the volume rocker was gone. I don't remember dropping the phone and when I looked down the volume rocker was just sitting there on the desk as if it had fallen out of the phone while it was sitting there. If it had chosen another place to fall out, like when I was outside for example, it probably would have gotten lost and I would never have volume controls again. To be fair, I haven't done a durability test so I can't really say for sure, I mean for all I know this plastic bumper might protect the phone from a bad fall, but I doubt it. In conclusion, this phone shows its price in several ways, but it's really unfair to assume this phone would perform like a device almost three times its price. And really, this phone does what it's supposed to do, and as far as features go, it's got plenty to choose from. No complaints there. So yeah, the Nokia 5230 Neuron. It's a great addition to my collection, and I had fun playing with this thing for the video. If there's anything in particular you would like to see on this channel, feel free to drop suggestions down in the comment section below, and while you're down there, feel free to drop subscribe. It would mean so much to me and to the growth of this channel. Every one of you who watches and subscribes, I want to give you a huge thanks and let you know that I appreciate every one of you. So that'll be it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.